Hi, it's Preston DeGuys here, and in this video I'm going to take you through the process of setting up a basic VMware backup policy using PPDM. Now in a previous video I showed you how to connect your vCenter server with PPDM. As soon as you connect a vCenter server with PPDM, the system performs an asset discovery. That discovery is now complete, and I can jump across to the infrastructure assets in order to see a list of all the virtual machines managed by the vCenter server that PPDM is connected to. You can see we've got a scrollable page list of the virtual machines, but there's also the option to search for specific virtual machines in the asset list as well, and that search is pretty much immediate. Now, to configure backups in PPDM, we'll go over and choose Protection Policies in the sidebar. Click Add to add a new policy. You can choose the policy type that you want to add and give a name and a description to the policy here. I'm going to create a policy to just back up some old virtual machines that I use for lab testing. There are three VM policies that you can create. Crash Consistent, which is a regular VM backup, Application Aware, which you use for Microsoft SQL Server virtual machines, and Exclusions, so you can specify virtual machines that won't be protected via dynamic policies. I'm just going to use the Crash Consistent option here. In this mode, I'm going to manually select the virtual machines I want to protect. When you first add a VM, you'll get a note about options for excluding virtual disks, which I'll turn off for now. I'm going to select a couple of virtual machines that are on this page, then search for other virtual machines to add. Note that the search isn't just of virtual machine names, but also of VM properties as well. So when I search for Scent, I'm not only picking up virtual machines with sent in their name, but also virtual machines that are flagged as CentOS systems in VMware itself. Now that I've selected all the virtual machines I want to protect, I can click Next to continue the configuration. I'll click to create a new backup schedule where I can configure the type and frequency of the backups for this policy. I'll choose a retention period of 14 days and leave the start and end times for the policy as they are. There's also an option there for create full, which you can use to override and specify periodic full backups, such as if you want to force a new full backup on a specific day of the week or a specific day of the month. I'll leave it turned off for this sort of backup policy. When you create a backup policy, you can also assign a service level agreement or objective to the policy. This lets you tell PPDM what your recovery objectives are for this policy and whether you want retention lock used against the backups. You can also select if you want verification that copies are deleted once they're expired, which is great for, say, database policies that DBAs will run and manage themselves. I've set an RPO of 24 hours. The compliance window is used to specify the exact window that the backup policy is allowed to run in. Now I've created the backup schedule in the SLA, I'll need to attach the policy to a data domain. Don't worry about mTree setup on the data domain, PPDM will handle all of that for you. All you need to do is provide the data domain name and some credentials for PPDM to use when it connects. I'd created these credentials on the data domain system earlier, so it's just a case of adding them to PPDM and then allowing PPDM to perform a connection verification to the data domain.
Once I save the storage target setup, I'll have configured everything I need to get this basic policy up and running. I'll return to the policy screen where I can save the policy. PPDM will then do its setup work for the policy in the background and automatically start the policy during the next configured window. At this point, we finish configuring a virtual machine backup policy. Be sure to check back soon for more PPDM videos. Thanks for watching.